Shabbat Shalom. This is Eliyahu Holly, and I'm very, very happy and honored to be here with Jeff Goldstein. Jeff is a friend for many, many years, and uh, he's an amazing healer. He's done great healing with me, and an amazing teacher, and uh, a man of great peace who brings peace. Just by his very vibration, wherever Jeff goes, uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, I can talk about myself. Wherever he goes, uh, I mean, when he comes by, I just feel myself relaxing and my vi vibration becoming more quiet and peaceful. So, uh, so hi Jeff, how are you today? Good, I'm great, doing very well, thank you. Thanks for what you just said, the honest man. It's absolutely true. And I can't say that about many people I know. I have very few. Uh, anyway, so, uh, believe it or not, friends, Jeff is 59 years old. Uh, uh, he just told me that today. I'm a little bit in shock. But anyway, I'd li I always like to begin at the beginning. So, to ask people about their spiritual path mm -hmm. and how they found their way. And what about you, Jeff? Where did you grow up and what kind of environment do you come from and stuff like that? Well, I grew up uh, in Long Island, New York, and I was very fortunate to grow up uh, about a uh, three or four minute walk away from a big lake that had a uh, large nature reserve around it. And I would spend uh, as much time as I could there. I would go in the after school and I would wander around into the, uh, into the swamp lands there. I had special shoes that I just um, would... Um, would use there and uh, just wander around and there were fish and bird life and I would climb trees. So I spent a lot of my time in nature and being in nature there I started to realize that there was there's another reality that's present and now I call that the like the spiritual reality and um, at the time I wasn't quite sure and uh, I realized that the nature spirits are speaking and the uh, the spirits, uh, um, the spirits in general, are speaking very strongly in this place because it was a pure place. Um, so that's really one of the beginnings for me. After a few, um, after a few years, I um, discovered tra discovered transcendental meditation and uh, TM. TM, and I, I started that, and that led me into. Um, doing many other things, including yoga. And then I met a group of called the Emissaries of Divine Light, and I learned uh, a method call, called attunement, which is really, uh, it's similar to a healing method, and it's the base of what I do for healing now. And um, it just kept growing over the years. And, um, and you do this attunement work on many people here in Israel for many, many years. And it's an amazing work. It, it does what I said that Jeff does uh, it, um, sort of automatically now. It just it relaxes. It brings a sort of a, a deep peace. And um, actually, you, you carry that energy with you all the time. You know? So, uh, which is very interesting. Well, there are many levels that you can do attunement with. The, the method of attunement, it, it works with the nervous system and the endocrine system helping to clean and to balance them. You get to a place where the body can start to heal itself again through these systems. Uh, but you can do attunement just by your presence. You can do attunement with words, with your eyes. You can do attunement um, with, um, with toning, with sounds. And uh, I've done all of these at different, uh, different times in my life. Okay, well, I feel it. So, um it's very interesting. You say that the, the, the technique balances and, and cleanses. Correct. And Cryon actually says that all healing is really balancing. And that all the healer could really do for anybody is to balance them. And then it's sort of the responsibility uh, of the person who has received to, to find a way to keep that balance. And uh, well, very simply, we live in, in we we are energy beings or spiritual beings and physical. The energy part of ourselves um, 
it gets polluted. Unfortunately, we live in a energetically polluted world, and there is many there's energies flowing around, and we're like magnetic, so we attract things. Yes. Um, and so what happens is many times we collect things that aren't ours in in our energy field, and it starts to block or distort the flow of the natural flow of life energy. Yes. So what I do through attunement is I help that natural flow of energy get stronger in the body so it cleans some of these things. And I agree with what you just said about cryon, that all healing work is really helping that individual so that they gain the power so they can heal themselves. Um, the healers that take credit for fixing someone else, usually it's not correct. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting what you say about how we attract. We attract uh, health enhancing energies or energies that will um, have a disruptive influence. And uh, this is connected with what I understand is the law of attraction. Uh, like attracts like. Now, if I'm vibrating or if my being is radiating disharmony by law of attraction, which is, as I understand, the most powerful law in the universe, I will attract similar vibrations, more difficult energy. And so that's the great power uh, that our awareness plays. I, I need to be aware that I'm out of balance and find a way to turn it around with my thoughts, with my focus, uh, with meditating, and then when I turn it around, of course, I'll start attracting life-enhancing energies. Well, what you were just saying um, about the law of attraction, I think that it, it, it's very true. We, uh, we can attract healthy energy to us, healthy people to us, healthy circumstances. And sometimes what happens is we um, attract things that need to be cleansed. And this takes me to another level of my work that I do, my spiritual peace work. Um, here in Jerusalem, Israel, where we live, um, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of uh, interest and activities in developing spiritual peace. And I've been involved with many of these people um, and many of the organizations. And sometimes what happens is there are energies that are not clean or distorting the the overall piece of a city or a circumstance of a group. And those energies, they start to come to us, and when we don't claim them to ourselves, we allow them to uh, dissipate, we allow them to heal. So, in a sense, we offer a, uh, an opportunity for the world to get a little bit stronger, for peace to get a little bit uh, uh, more flowing once we're uh, cleansing these energies. So you're, you're talking about transmutation. Um, so, I mean, I've known people in my life, and I think you're one of those people, uh, who walks into a, a, a hard place, a difficult place, and you just feel the energy getting better there. And, they're, and it's not like they're necessarily doing a conscious technique. It's just that it happens sort of automatically because they hold this this vibration of peace. Um. But what's really happening is um, places want to be clean. People want to be clean. It's, it's the natural result that we just want to be in a clean, flowing place. And so when someone who comes in and holds strong energy comes to a place, naturally, uh, spirit puts that person to work in a sense to help cleanse it. And then people get attracted to that because they're longing for it. Yeah. And that goes it goes not just to individuals, it also goes to group consciousness, which is more difficult, but this is part of the spiritual peace work I spoke about. I find the phrase spiritual peace work interesting. Because you have people here, a lot of people up here, who will define themselves as peace workers. And, um, but I think I understand um, the idea that it needs to be spiritual peace work, because um, it's not like activism, or like somebody's on the left or somebody's on the right and they're an activist, so-called, for peace. That's a, that's a path 
that could be very unpeaceful. Uh, so I like that phrase, spiritual peace work. Well, it's well very I, accurate. Well, I call it, uh, I make a distinction between spiritual peace work and political peace work. Indeed. Indeed. And, and so political peace work is trying to fix the political system and trying to heal some of the problems, trying to stop building this or trying to give back this. Yes, exactly. And all of these things, they're very necessary. Or not. Perhaps. Most of them are, I mean, a lot okay. of them are necessary, but, but it's, it's very difficult to get to. Yes. I believe that, that humanity has to change their consciousness, particularly Here's politicians the and in the whole political uh, uh, makeup. It has to shift to a different level. And I believe that's happening very slowly. And when the that people change, we don't see that. When the people change, the politicians will change. And it is slowly, and sometimes maybe we don't see it, but sometimes we do see it. This is what's happening in the Arab world right now, these revolutions. These are the young people, and it's an expression of a change in consciousness, especially in the young people. That's what I believe. Well, this is definitely happening, and um, this is a whole other conversation. Okay, very well. But um, w what, what we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do, and the other people that I know, is to hold a sacred space so that humanity can catch up. Humanity got lost in, in the fighting and the wars and the chaos. And now there's a new movement of spiritual peace workers on earth. It's stronger and stronger. Yes. Just look at the internet and how much, uh, how much abundance there is of people sharing their ideas and, and their knowledge. And um, this, this is growing. And as this starts to grow, my theory at least, and, and uh, hopefully and then the politicians will start to recognize this is a direction to go in. And right now, it's still stuck, but I can see signs of things loosening up. And maybe we could talk about that another time. Very well. And um, I also, what, I love what you said about spiritual reality. You would go by the beautiful lake, and you would be blessed by the spiritual reality all around you. And uh, what I understand is there are nature spirits, fairies, divas, uh, who actually live on different vibrational levels, different dimensional levels, and they can see us, but uh, very often we don't see them. And they want to help us to heal. They want to strengthen us. And uh, we just have to sort of ask or open ourselves uh, in some way, maybe not consciously. And then, and then they will do that. And that's why being out in nature is... He's just the greatest healer um, that, that a person could do. And this is very much what you're about, Jeff. Yeah, I know Jeff, uh, by the park, he lives near the Jerusalem forest. He spends a lot of time, energy, and loving energy in helping the trees of the Jerusalem forest. What do you do and why do you do it, Jeff? Well, I just, um, I've been doing a project since, I guess, for about a year now of uh, trimming some of the almond trees and the olive trees. Many tr many of these trees haven't been taken care of in uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 Whoa. years. And they just are filled with vines and dead branches. And uh, I've been hiking there for a long time. And one day, I just, uh, a friend of mine was trim trimmed a tree, and it looked really nice, and we spoke about it. And then all of a sudden, I realized, well, maybe I'll try it. And uh, so I started trimming some almond trees. And um, it, it was excellent. It was, it, 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 it's hard work. It's good work. Um, and, um, and then I started to trim more and more. And eventually, I finished the almond trees on this hill that I go to. And then um, I started working with the olive trees. Olive trees are much more difficult because some of them uh, have a lot of what they call suckers or branches that are coming from the bottom. Mm -hmm. and, um, Anyway, I've been working on it, and I look and I look at this as like an analogy for peace. Yeah. Like like creating peace and using the trees as an analogy because an almond tree is supposed to, is a symbol of peace, and if it's not been taken care of in 30, 40, they haven't been taken care of in so long. So what happens is they um, it, it's like it's a great symbol for it, and you start to see that like peace is stuck. No one's taking, no one's trimming <laughs> off the dead <laughs> branches. Uh, and so I've done a little work with this, and 
and uh, or not so little, I think not so little. No, I've done that, and I've also I've did did, did a couple of uh, my own personal uh, uh, videos and write and uh, and um, writing about it, uh, taping it, but I haven't done anything with that yet. A big project. So um, and right now is not the season. We're in June now, so uh, it's not the season to trim. Um, but one of the things I would say is that the almond trees, when I went back in the spring, uh, it was amazing. The flowers were just amazing, and, and the trees look so, look so nice and pretty. What they want is our love. They know uh, if they are being loved or not. And when they feel this consciousness of the human bringing them love, they thrive. There are many studies that have shown this. But it's also intuitive. Oh, absolutely. Trees, trees love it, and the, and the earth loves it, and the, and as you said before, the Davis and the nature spirits. Love it. And um, we're just not used to the fact that there's an invisible spiritual world. Some people are the Davis, the spirits, the uh, the um, that the nature spirits. They live in this other dimension. We're so used to just being in the physical dimension that we s we s we don't see so much. And I believe every person is capable of. Look, looking and seeing into the spiritual dimension, but we haven't developed that ability within us. So it stays uh, hidden or latent within inside of us. And those of us that are opening up our spiritual path, we see more and more and more. And I also believe that it's a collective thing. When you and I come together, it's easier for me to see spirit because you see spirit and I do in, s in maybe in a little bit different ways and so it opens a little more. Yes. And when we have group gatherings, then it can open up even more. And, and friends, you know, uh, have you ever noticed that people who spend a lot of quality time in nature, they have a different look in their eyes? There's this, there's a softness, a soft energy that they radiate from their eyes, and Jeff does very much. And I've seen it, I've seen even, like, I once remember a group of young people who spent a few days in the Dead Sea, uh, by the Dead Sea, and when they came back, they had this beautiful, soft look in their eyes. Some real magic happens by being out uh, in a loving way with nature, and um, and it's the great healer, and the great healer for humanity. So, so you know, I guess we agree. I know Jeff has also spent a lot of time picking up garbage in the Jerusalem forest. And uh, as we say here, this is an endless task. it's an endless task. Because people people just don't know that they're supposed to pack up their, if they take in garbage, they take pack it out with them. In America, they have, uh, they used to have a slogan, pack it in, pack it out. What you take into nature, you take out. Yes. And I was just visiting America, and I noticed they don't have a lot of trash cans around because people are doing that. Here we have trash cans, and uh, and it piles up all around it. And then the animals uh, in the Jerusalem forest, we have a lot of uh, um, tamim um, coyotes, uh -huh. and um, they go and they tear up the. the I think more like foxes, not really coyotes. No, no, we have foxes, coyotes. Coyotes. Coyotes, deer. Yes. Yeah, I, hear, I hear the fox, the, the coyotes from my house every night. Like the so in the southwest of the United States? Yes, but they're different types. They're, they're, they're different. different. Okay. But, but they're little dogs. And, and you see them, and there's okay. many, many of them. Ah, oh, how interesting. And, uh, there's many animals. Uh, yes, yes, we have, thank God, uh, <laughs> our animals here. Um, so, um, Jeff, I'd love to ask you about why you chose to come here, of all, <laughs> of all places, Israel. I met Jeff back in 93, I think. Or 95. Yeah, I, well, I wanted to mention this that when I first met you, yes. uh, I met you at Joanne's uh, house That's at, right. at a meeting. And then we got to be friends and talking, and then I came to visit you, and one day we decided to do a, uh, a meeting to invite our, some other spiritual friend. And that meeting started, and we used to have different leaders each week from our group. In my old place, yeah. Your old, old, old place. First that's place. right, that's right. And. Uh, Jeff was one of the leaders, and there were three others, as I recall. And um, we used to have amazing meetings there, yeah. uh, just just touching into the spiritual world, and that's grown and grown. And so now you uh, you are in, you're married, you're a family, you have a you have a nice house to have meetings in, and.
and many people come over, and I've been to many, many meetings here. That's right. So you've uh, created a spiritual center around you, and I'm always happy to be part of the beginning of that. Jeff was a big part, and uh, thank God, it, you know, it took me completely by surprise. Okay, Jeff, again, what brings you to Israel? Um, well, actually, I, I lived here when I was uh, younger, in the 1970s, and I really liked it, and, I, and something kept strong in my heart. I was here for two and a half years, and then I went back what, to What, out of Kibbutz or something? No, I lived in Jerusalem with a spiritual group of people. The emissaries. Right. We had a small group, and we actually created a community uh, between Jerusalem and Ramallah at a place called the Summer of Lease Hotel. Okay. And uh, we lived there and in other communities, and uh, we were doing uh, peace work in our own unique way, um, helping people to wake up to spirit, and I did a lot of attunement, uh, healing work with people then. And then it was time for me to go back. Uh, it, it was difficult. It wasn't e it's not easy to live here, as you know. No, not easy. And um, I, then I went back. And then um, there was one time when uh, my life changed. I think I was around 40. And my life was just changing. And um, I decided to come back to visit. And when I came back to visit, I really liked it. And then I met my wife, and I just, just stayed here. But to really answer your question, why I came here, is because I'm into earth energy, spiritual earth energy, as we've been speaking about, and healing and working with the earth. So I do a lot of work with sending energy to the earth and blessing and cleansing patterns that are stuck inside the earth. And um, so I started to do this, and I found that Jerusalem really needed it. You so bet. I, so I've lived my whole uh, existence of, in, in Israel, in Jerusalem. And I'm fortunate now to live uh, um, like a two-minute walk from the Jerusalem forest, and then I have many mystical places. And I also have been doing some tours with with people, spiritual, mystical tours. And um, this is a, another uh, avenue that's opening up. Your faith, as we say, beautiful. And uh, Jeff is a father of two beautiful little girls who are getting bigger all the time. I can't believe he's 59, but it's this this way of life.